call to order the meeting of Monday, September the 9th. If the clerk will please read the roll. Council Member Archibald? Here. Council Member Ashford? Present. Council Member Beaton? Here. Council Member Harris? Here. Council Member Pemberton? Here. Council Member Warden? Here. Mayor Rapp? Here. You have before you the minutes from the regular meeting of August the 12th. Is there a motion to receive and file? So move, Madam Chair. Council Member Ashford, is there a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there any changes to the minutes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes will stand as submitted. We do have two presentations tonight. If the clerk will please read the first one. Chief Nicholson will recognize the members of the Port Huron Fire Department's newly established underwater rescue team. Mayor and Council, uh, after nearly 18 months of program design and training, the Port Huron Fire Department is now able to render immediate aid to drowning victims via the newly formed underwater rescue team. This is not a true dive team per se, but is a way to maximize this department's ability to respond quickly to calls for service involving near drownings and drownings. All frontline engine and ladder companies in the city's fire department will be equipped with the Aqualung Rapid Diver Unit, which was approved for purchase by this council last fall. More importantly, the 12 fire officers and firefighters before you tonight are properly trained on the equipment they are expected to use at a moment's notice. The operating environment of the St. Clair River, which includes the hazards of high current, cold water, highly variable visibility, and underwater snags, presents a very high risk to the firefighters, especially with a limited duration scuba unit. The training program and guidelines for operating in this climate with these units had to be developed from scratch. These members received basic open water scuba training through Anchor Bay Scuba in Fairhaven. I'd like to thank Don and Mickey Warna for their patience and assistance for scheduling training around the 24-hour fire suppression work schedule. After basic open water scuba, the decision was made to bring in Dive Rescue International out of Fort Collins, Colorado for a critical skills rapid intervention team training. Because of the inherent risk with scuba operations, we believe dealing with underwater equipment and entrapment scenarios was critical for overall diver safety. The instructors for this four-day class, based on an evaluation of our potential working environment, advise that we also establish a baseline water survival fitness test. This was the IADRS Waterman test. This is not an easy test, particularly because the evolutions have to be performed consecutively. Members worked with YMCA and Port Union Recreation staff while on duty to enhance their swimming efficiency. I'd like to thank Nancy Windsor and her staff for use of the city pools, as well as the Port Union YMCA and Marysville Schools for their facilities. Dive Rescue International returned in August for a formal three-day public safety diver course, which included evolutions in the St. Clair River and Lake Huron. Additionally, on-duty training sessions have continued to be held on the St. Clair River. Team members have received well over 100 hours of training, often on their days off. All fire department members have received equipment familiarization and dive tender training. At this time, we are able to conduct shore-based daytime rescues in the St. Clair River and Lake Huron. As training opportunities and funding become available, operating parameters will increase to include black water and nighttime operations. Tonight, we'll be dist distributing diver pins to the 12 members of the underwater rescue team. I would like to recognize Lieutenant Jeff Easter for his absolute dedication to the development of this team. Lieutenant Easter had to develop this program from the ground up, from training and equipment to standard operating guidelines. There was simply no other organization to copy that will be expected to operate in a similar environment with these units. I will pin Lieutenant Easter with a gold diver's badge, which signifies his leadership with the underwater rescue team. Lieutenant. Lieutenant Easter will now present diver pins to the members of the underwater rescue team. <laughs> Lieutenant Rick Bartley. <laughs> Lieutenant Roger Hollison.
Lieutenant Matt Oliaga. Lieutenant Kevin Robinson. Firefighter Steve Dadosha. Firefighter Cody Gordon. Gordon. Firefighter Bruce Holt. Firefighter Rob May. Firefighter Jim Pavelic. Probationary firefighter Noah Lukowski. And one additional member, Lieutenant Nate Johnson, who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor and Council, uh, your underwater rescue team, City of Portland Fire Department. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. I know it was a lot of hard work. <laughs> Most of these members are on engine and ladders right now, so they probably should be ready to go someplace. Right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, family. The families for Yeah, we have out. some families here, too. Thank yeah. you for sharing your either father, spouse, or whatever with us and the community. We will move on to presentation number two. Proclamation designating September 2019 as National Recovery Month will be presented to represent representatives of the Blue Water Recovery and Outreach Center. If you'd like to meet me at the podium. I'll read the uh, proclamation and then you can take a few minutes and speak, okay? Sure. Whereas behavioral health is an essential part of health and one's overall wellness, and whereas prevention of mental and substance abuse disorders works treatment is effective and people recover in our area and around the nation, and whereas preventing and overcoming mental and substance use disorders is essential to achieving healthy lifestyles, both physically and emotionally, and whereas we must encourage relatives and friends of people with mental and or substance use disorders to implement preventative measures, recognize the signs of a problem, and guide those in need to appropriate treatment and recovery support services. And whereas thousands of people in St. Clair County are affected by these conditions, and whereas to help more people achieve and sustain long-term recovery, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, and the Port Huron City Council invite all residents of Port Huron to participate in National Recovery Month, September 2019. Now, therefore, I, Pauline M. Rep, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Port Huron, and on behalf of council members Archibald, Ashford, Beeden, Harris, Pemberton, M. Warden, do hereby proclaim September 2019 to be National Recovery Month in the city of Port Huron, and call upon the people in our community to observe this month with appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies to support this year's Recovery Month theme. Join the voices for recovery. Together we are stronger. Thank you. Photo <laughs> 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 
photographer. <laughs> Sure. City Council, thank you. Um, I would just like to take a couple of minutes to say uh, thank you to City Council, Mayor Rep, James Freed. It's been a pleasure getting to know uh, some of you over the last year, two years. And, and this is not about me. This is not about Alex. This is not about BW Rock. This is an issue that has affected our community. It's affected our state and it's affected our nation. Uh, BW Rock was formed in September of 2017 by a group of individuals that went through addiction, struggled the battles themselves, and came out uh, re with restored lives and on a mission to help others restore their lives. So today, I mean, we, we started out looking at a blank wall, those that have started BW Rock. And, um, and with that, today we, we help about one to two individuals in this community on a daily basis, connecting those that are struggling with addiction to recovery in some capacity or another. And we couldn't do that without the support of City Council, without the support of the City of Port Huron, without the business community of Port Huron. We are not a state-funded program. We are privately funded through individual donations and corporate sponsors, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to the public comment portion of our agenda. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to address the City Council on any agenda item or other matter under our jurisdiction, please come forward, give us your name and address, and you have four minutes. Uh, Chris Troy, 1229 7th Street. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Now, before there was radio and there was television, neighbors would get together with their acoustic instruments, sit on their porch, and entertain each other by singing songs and, you know, just having a good time. So the Old Town District decided we wanted to come up with a way to shine a spotlight on all the improvements that have been being made and the real regeneration of the, uh, of the area. So this Saturday, we are holding the inaugural Old Town Porch Con Day of Porch Concerts. Now what that is, that's basically you show up with your lawn chair and you sit starting at 1229 7th Street and you listen to an hour of acoustic music. Then you pick up your lawn chair, you go to the next house down the road. You sit and you listen to a different style of music. We have everything from country to jazz to bluegrass to rock and roll to alt rock and roll. And the fun thing about it is you're going to see performers, if you get out in the nightlife, who are used to big bands, they've all been asked to strip down and do acoustic numbers. So they've been having fun figuring out how to rearrange their songs while really shining a good spotlight on the area. Uh, we have a number of craft vendors, uh, children's face painting, and it's just, uh, it's our first year doing it, so we're going to see how it goes. I really would like to thank the city and Mr. Freed for helping us negotiate through the, the, the pitfalls of city paperwork and all that to make sure this happens. You guys have been great, and we couldn't do that without your help. Now, speaking of help, we'd love it if the mayor could show up at noon and say just a nice couple first words to just kind of let everybody know in the city that we're all together. That the city were one big happy family, I hope. Um, so that starts at noon. On Saturday, it's noon to five. Um, it should be just a, a good, fun day. There's also food there. There's a food vendor there. So a little bit of something for everybody. Uh, the second thing I'm up here is 9-11 is very close on hand. Uh, my wife and I would just like to take the opportunity to thank all um, responders, early responders, uh, the police and city in Port Huron, the fire department in Port Huron, and really just our general United States support that we get. Um, we all sleep happily at night in our beds while other people are out working trying to keep us safe. And I just think with 9-11 coming, it's one of those things that we never show people enough appreciation. So thank you for your time. Have a great evening. Thank you. And I will be there. Awesome. <laughs> Good evening, council members. My name is Nina Kinney. I live at 1607 17th Street. I'm here again to discuss your plans to place a ban on marijuana businesses. As I'm sure you are aware, I'm not in favor of this ban, and neither are a lot of my fellow voters. We passed Prop 1 overwhelmingly in our area. By doing so, we expected to have safe access as soon as possible. By placing this ban, you are not doing that. You have said it's temporary, but who's to say you won't extend it? The state has issued emergency rules to help communities figure it out. I have personally contacted Lara to ask questions and was pleasantly surprised when they responded to me within 48 hours. I forwarded this email to each of you 
If the state is that willing to answer a citizen's questions, I can only imagine what they would be willing to do to work with you or our city attorney to get his questions answered. We have heard Mr. Fletcher's stories about the robbery that occurred at the unlicensed grow operation in Santa Lac County. That's exactly why we need to opt in. We want facilities that are safe and secure. The state law was developed to ensure this. By going through with this ban, you are making it easier for these types of things to happen. Mr. Fletcher also claims there is no hurry because the law states you must own a medical marijuana business to open a recreational business. The state ensured me that this is not the case. Any Michigan resident may apply for a micro business, a Class A grower's license, consumption, or event planner's license starting in November of 2019. Mr. Fletcher also ensured you that the voters couldn't do anything about the ban. This is also false and can be done by petitioning to have it added to the next ballot, taking control out of your hands. I doubt that's what you want, so please reconsider your ban. As I've said before, I want to open a social club, a club that gives back to our community. We want to show our council and community that cannabis users are a great asset to our area. For example, in Lapeer and Genesee County, they have multiple clubs that give back to the community through adopting roads and highways to care for, doing food and clothing drives, or even just going out to build wheelchair ramps for those in need. We want Port Huron to have this too. Give us the opportunity to change the stigma and show you that we can change the way you see this and we can give back. We would happily do that. Please reconsider this ban, or at least consider allowing the social club until you can figure out the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council this evening? I remembered to bring my timer this time. My name is Laura Rigby. I'm at 809 11th Street here in Port Huron. Thank you for your time, and all of my information can be found in the newspapers or at the Michigan Law site under frequently asked questions. For the past seven years I've been working in the cannabis industry. I've worked as a patient, a caregiver, and a cannabis counselor that worked with a certifying physician. At our last meeting I heard the term nominal revenue several times. With the state beginning to looking forward to, to uh, collecting 94.9 million dollars in the first year of revenue, and the cities and counties receiving 30% of that, I do not believe that $28.5 million is considered a nominal revenue. Even if broken down to a city level, it only comes to $300,000. I still do not call that a nominal revenue. I can, however, see where this can be used as a type of hose fund for our community. And what I mean by that is that money who we were, which we were not looking forward to and we did not tax our, our, our citizenship on, will be able to go towards things like our pension fund we're having problems with or even towards our sewage bill and help out bring <coughs> our water bills down. Um, the city can also get up to $5,000 licensing fees per business, depending on the type of business that they would like. Now, I know that part of the ban is they do, you are trying to make sure EPA and government levels and all kinds of different levels are all taken care of before <coughs> businesses can open. However, there are some small, lower licenses that we can open as soon as November 1st. One a couple of them being is we can have an event holder. During that event, we can open up our our, biz, our community to other micro businesses to come in and distribute their product. Another thing we can open right away is a designated consumption establishment. That's a very small um, opening fees and there are several locations here in our city that are, are looking into trying to open one of those. Um, we can always wait and we can allow the big guys to come in with the money and that will probably well want them at towards the end of it and that can end, wait till the end of 2020. However, here in 2019 and as early as November, we can start looking at these small, more cost effective grow licenses that we can put into effect here in our community. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to address the City Council this evening? Seeing no one, I'll declare public. Were you just getting up? Yeah. 
How you all doing? My name is Ray. Um, I just recently moved to the city of Port Huron with this man and this woman right here, these beautiful people. Um, and I'm just wondering and concerned. What was your last name? Norton, Ray Norton. I'm just concerned about the marijuana ban as I don't see the, um, I don't see the coherence in a marijuana ban in the context of the state, in the context of the nation, of the people's will, in, you know, um, in enjoying the benefits, the pleasures, the medicinal benefits, the economic benefits of marijuana. So I just want to wonder and I want to know what kind of corporate influences, what kind of influences period would be behind a marijuana ban? What's the, the reasoning behind a marijuana ban? And why would you want to ban this thing that the people love and the people that you all solemnly serve, mind you, are supportive of? And so these words may come off as um, direct, but this is a very direct situation because it directly affects the population of Port Huron. And so again, I'm just wondering what this ban is about, given the context of the situation, and why do you guys want to put this in place? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the city council this evening? Public comment closed. We'll move on with the agenda. We have the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Ma Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Mayor, uh, I would like to uh, take six through nine off the consent agenda, please. Six, seven, eight, and nine. Are you seconding the motion too? Yes. Or seconding the motion. Okay, it's seconded <clears throat> by Councilmember Ashford. Mayor Rep. Councilmember Warden. Can you also take number four off for me? Okay. We will take the vote on the balance of the uh, consent agenda. Councilmember Archibald? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Pemberton? Yes. Councilmember Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Items that were approved on the consent agenda was approving the agreement with the Michigan Department of Transportation for maintenance of the state trunk lines and bridges for the period October 1 to September 30th, it's October 1 of this year to September 30th of 2024, authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute a multi-year sponsorship agreement with McLaren Port Huron to assist with the revamping of the McMoran Place Plaza, approving the scheduling of a public hearing for September 23rd to hear comments on a code case at 1214 Lincoln Avenue, approving the appointment of Teresa Capoto to the Beautification Commission for a term to expire January 30th, 2022, confirming the mayor's appointment of James Fisher to the Planning Commission for a term to expire August 11th, 2022, confirming the mayor's reappointment of Robert J. Funk and Timothy Ward to the Tax Increment Finance Authority with terms to expire September 14, 2023, and designating the week of September 22nd through the 28th as National Rail Safety Week in the city of Port Huron. We will then move to, from the city manager, item one. Accepting the bid from Jorgensen Ford in the amount of $32,349 for a 2019 Ford F-250 4x2 pickup truck equipped with a service body for use by the motor vehicle pool. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Support. Councilmember Pemberton. Is there a discussion? Yes, Madam Mayor, um, does yes. this include any kind of trade-in or just... Uh, no. No? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? We'll take the vote. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Uh, number two. Accepting the bid from Jorgensen Ford in the amount of $68,594 for two 2020 Ford Explorer utility vehicles in accordance with the State of Michigan My Deal Purchasing Program and authorizing an estimated teardown and rebuild cost not to exceed $8,600 per patrol vehicle. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Councilmember Pemberton supported by Councilmember Beaton. Is there any comments, discussion? The only comment I'd like to thank the administration 
Uh, actually, on all of these, well, we always ask the question, how much is in the, uh, the pool there? And I see you slipped it in there yep. this time. So yep. good for you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Councilmember Harris. I guess, I guess my comment is, is we've uh, changed the strategy of having the, the in-house work done on the transfer. And uh, how did we figure that out where it's a plus for us? So excellent question, Councilman Harris. Uh, our staff, with the amount of retirements we have and the reduction in staff, it simply became too long of a wait to wait for a vehicle. We'd often buy a patrol car, and it'd be six months or more before the patrol car ever got on the road. So we went with a firm down in Troy, which actually does, I would say, significant amount of police municipalities across the state. Uh, not only do they do it faster, better, and cheaper than government does, but they do a better job. I mean, it's a better quality. Our police chief has been very impressed with their uh, operation. Uh, chief and the administrative lieutenant went down there and toured their operation. Uh, it's just top notch. And all they do is emergency vehicles. They actually did our chief's uh, uh, fire department, uh, fire, excuse me, fire chief's uh, rig as well. They did an excellent job on that. And so they're actually able to provide us a lot of tips and industry best practices that are being used across the state where, where to put lights. You know, if you're going down an intersection, put a light out front. And so it's worked out well. The private sector has just done it better than we can. Good. Thank you. And also, you were able to cap that, too, at 8,600. Correct. So we kind of contain that. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Mayor Rep. Councilmember Borden. Um, is it, again, is this going to be the first time that we're outsourcing this part, this $17,200? No. Or up to that? No. We've done numerous patrol cars, numerous fire departments. We've done a fire department rig. So, not at all. For the police department. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. We will take the vote. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three. Accepting the bid from Jones Equipment Rental in the amount of $30,266 for a Kubota LE cab tractor with attachments for use by the Parks and Forestry Division. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Mayor Rep. Yes, Councilmember Ashford. Oh, what's the case to be built for rental versus owning? Is there a case behind it? We're renting this, right? Is this a rental? No, no, we, okay. we, we own this. We're just getting it from Jones Equipment Rental. They also sell their Kubota dealership. Oh, they dealership. also Yeah, they're a Kubota okay. dealership. Yep. I didn't get that out of there. Yep, when sorry I about that. It. Oh, that's yep. okay. I just want to make sure I was reading it right. Okay. So how many Kubotas do we have currently? Nancy, can you answer that? Or Ben? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you, <laughs> you mean you don't know? I something? don't know. I'll believe it. <laughs> right, good evening, Council, Mayor, yeah. City Manager. This will be our second one in our department. We have a side-by-side -side is what we use to enter the parks. Um, it's a smaller, confined, a smaller vehicle that we use to go in and do trash collection, things like that with. This is actually a little bit bigger tractor. This is used during the summer months for baseball fields. This is how we pre uh, prepare our fields for games. Okay. This is also okay. used for wood chips in the parks. This is how we spread them and you know, spread them out and deliver them and stuff like that. Come fall time with the attachments we currently have and the new attachments, this will be also used for leaf removal, which will be in our parks you know, to blow all the leaves. And then come winter time, it has a snow blower and a blade for all our sidewalks. Good, thank you. Ben, to be clear, your leaf operation <coughs> requires a certain level of PTO output to power the leaf back? Correct. I mean, obviously, our parks are very large, so the horsepower and the way this thing spins blows the leaves very, makes it very, a lot easier for us to move these leaves. Uh, I can imagine Pine Park in the fall and the amount of leaves we have, so <laughs> it's very important. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, other? Rep? Yes. Council just uh, just for clarity, the <laughs> Jones Equipment Rental thirty thousand two hundred sixty six, and then Wine Guards out of Utica thirty nine three sixty four. Were both of them um, offering the same eighty five hundred dollar for the trade in? Is that how we got that uh, for us to evaluate this uh, the pricing on this? Uh, I'm not sure on the amount of the trade in that was handled by. It just states here it was $8,500 in trade-in for the current tractor, so that's why it's down to 30266 is how I understand it. And I'm just wondering, we're looking at the other one at not 39300 You know, it looks like it's a $9,000 savings, but I'm just wondering if both of them were the same trade-in negotiated. Mayor and City Council, it's part of the bid proposal that we received. 
uh, Jones Equipment Rental was the only one that offered a trade-in. So to compare apples to apples, their price reflects a trade-in where Weingarts did not offer one. So they're pretty similar in price, but yeah. they'll take this it's one off trade. our hand so we don't have to worry about selling it. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. We will take the vote. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item 4. Accepting the single source quote from Johnson Controls Incorporated in the amount of $16,326 for upgrading the existing municipal office center's air handler control system. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Councilmember Pemberton, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Is there a discussion? Yeah. Mayor Up. Councilmember Warden. I appreciate the description um, uh, about the, there was a fire back in June. Um, and I guess my understanding is they tried to get this thing back up and running and it says that they are not sure if it will if it will stop running there or not was that uh, re replacement was this 16,000 actually replacing parts of this uh, unit yeah I was gonna say we'll have winter come up for this yeah. one yeah Mayor and City Council, this is essentially replacing the hardware and software component. So it, it's basically the brains of the operation. I think right now we're on version like five, and this would update the software version to 10, along with the, the hardware as well. And do they provide any type of like a warranty once we do this upgrade on the part? It's a one year, it's in their proposal. Um, let's see. There's a one year There is a one year there's a one-year, uh, included in this is a one-year software maintenance program, and there's also some training and things in that of such. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Councilmember Ashford. Yeah, aside from this being old, like it's long overdue, did the, the fire actually brought that out that you really had to do something? Yeah, I mean, we have that? Johnson Control does routine maintenance. They come here, I think, every quarter. Mm -hmm. But during that event, when the system went down, unexpectedly and then he tried to bring it back up it became evident that <coughs> they no longer support that because of software being so old so him trying to connect to it with the equipment he brought right. was an issue so it's like today's day we live in with our phones and everything after a certain point just manufacturers stop supporting it right and that's the point I'm trying to make it's long overdue anyway and so yeah thank you you're welcome thanks Mara. Any other questions before Mr. Witter sits down Thank you. We'll take the vote. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yeah, yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item 5. Accepting the sole source proposal from DTE Energy in the amount of $342,359 for upgrading and relocating utility feeds at the wastewater treatment plant. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Pemberton. No, it was me. Oh, boy, you two sound alike, and I don't look on. Do you know that? <laughs> we practice. <laughs> I think you do. Supported by Council Member Pemberton. Is there any questions? Madam Mayor, just to be clear, this you last year or a year and a half ago, you purchased the switch gear for almost half a million dollars. At the last meeting, you approved a construction of a building for more than a million dollars. This is to run power to it. And so we'll require an easement from the county to access part of their parcel to run that, uh, that uh, power source over. Uh, this is an estimate from DTE. Historically, DTE does estimate on the conservative side to give us kind of the worst case scenario. So a good very, a could very likely come in significantly under that. Additionally, on the page 20, you'll see the financial breakdown. Because it's a capital cost, we share it with Port Huron Township, Kimball Township, and Port Gratiot. So only 67% actually comes to the city of Port Huron, so about $230,784. Mayor Rep. Yes, Councilmember uh, Ashford. Just a point, uh, point here. I will not be, uh, I will be abstaining because that is my workplace here. Okay. Mayor Rep. 
Council Member Harris. I guess, I guess my only question with this is, is uh, the uh, Extreme Electric, which is at 1925 of Pier Avenue, is, a, is basically a con subcontract for Detroit Edison Company. And I've just wondered if we would were relaxed to not consider them to see if they're doing it. I, it wouldn't surprise me to see Extreme end up doing the work for Detroit Edison, but do you think it's a... Uh, These type of agreements you have to make directly with DTE, and then they can choose their subcontractor. But this has, this has to be a relationship directly with DTE and the city. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, you're probably right. <laughs> Anything else? We'll take the vote. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to resolutions number one. Authorizing eight payments. Is there a motion? So moved. Mayor President Archibald, is there a second? Support. Council Member Ashford, any questions or discussion? Uh, Mayor Rep? Yes, Council Member Warden. I just had a question on one of them on the little sub or memo note, uh, let's see. Michigan Pipe Inspection, it's a number 1 3, um, $3,250. But it actually is, you know, the bid, the bid, the contract award is $134,000, which hasn't been done yet, but it says insurance. So I'm wondering what, in that agreement, or we're paying for the insurance for what? What is this insurance? So I guess. So I can understand it. Mayor and Sutter Council, yes, that's true. Um, in the bid documents, when we put out for bid, there's a line item for insurance. Because it's an estimate on the amount of work we do, we pay, um, it's a three year contract, so one third of that is billed on an annual basis because we don't guarantee the amount of work. So. For the contractor taking insurance policy out on the whole bid amount, we might not do that. So we thought in fairness to the bidders that we'd pay the insurance on an annual basis. That way they're not fronting money that they don't do the work for. So, yeah, it, and it's, imagine the contracting details are that we're the additional named insured and they're holding us Correct. harmless so far. So. Yeah. It's just because we can't quantify. We have an estimate amount of work we want to do, but we don't know on an annual basis what we're going to do. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any other questions? Mayor Rep. Council Member Harris. I'd just like to offer a kind word to Michigan Pipe Inspection. You know, I, I had the fortune to go out there in a couple of jobs that they were doing and stuff, and they're probably the most conscientious vendor that we have for the city of Port Yarn and, and, and probably the, one of the least expensive. So I, I just think that, uh, you know, I don't even look at this a second time when they come in here like that, but it's, he's very conscientious. His headquarters over on Ronald Street and uh, that's what I'll say. They've done a nice job for us, and he, yeah. he responds very quickly to us. So, yep. thank you, uh -oh. Mayor. Up. Yes. I just have one more, just comment overall on some of these, um, uh, the construction work. There's some payments here for body construction, for the massive job they're doing from Quay Street all the way up to McMorrin for uh, uh, Michigan Avenue, and um, these guys are working there every day. Uh, it's right in my backyard. I can tell you. Um, it's you know the progress is coming and uh, I just want to appreciate um, they aren't out of there at you know 4:30 or 5 they aren't all out of there they're still working get trying to get this done for us so appreciate that. I've been advised that project is a month ahead of schedule and under budget. Oh, very nice. What, when is it, when do you think that will be done? I think in the next before the end of September. Very good. We will take the vote. Council Member Archibald. Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item two. Authorizing submission of the Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report for the 2018 program year to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for their review and approval regarding the use of CDBG and home funds. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Support. <laughs> that was two of you. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Pemberton. Is there any discussion? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Rep. Yes. Um, I just have a few uh, points here. Uh, I'm on page three, and I'm noting the objectives one through five. The uh, 
do we try to hit all these objectives? Is, yeah, is and that we have. To do? Yep, and we also use uh, essentially we benchmark year over year the level of assistance we give, the number of homes we eliminate, the level of people we finance or provide down payment assistance to. So there is benchmarking that goes along with it. So there's benchmarking. So, but financially wise, we don't. Uh, if we don't have money in that, we don't put money towards all these areas. Is that correct? Well, that's what it shows. Here. Yeah, for for example, what I'm saying, objective number five, it doesn't show we really uh, had any money advanced. Yeah. Well, we did. We did earmark. I believe it was thirty thousand dollars, thirty-five thousand dollars, to assist Blue Water Rescue Mission with their oh, additional okay. properties. So. For instance, so Objective 5, we, we specifically wrote that in there so that we could assist Blue Water Rescue Mission. They came to us a year prior. We programmed it in. So, yeah, there, was a, there is an earmark there, and it's that those funds are, are, are on hold waiting for a Blue Water Rescue Mission to tap them. Oh, okay. And I talked to them this week, and they're going to get ready to make an application to use those funds. Okay, because it was showing zeros. <coughs> so that's Correct, why they have showing spelled zeros. It, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then also um, I'd like to... Uh, the tension on the uh, on the racial complex. Do you have an answer for that? The racial which breakdown? page? Oh, where am I at here? I'm on page ten. The racial and ethnic composition of the families. We have white, where CDBG funds are 76, and home 27. We have black and African Americans at eight, and under CDBG and homes one. Uh, so, do we have a a narrative that fits this is it yeah, if you, if you were, yeah it actually that's proportionally overlays if you take the US census data that that would almost overlay identical to our actual breakdown of ethnic diversity within our city so what we do is we go to demonstrate that the percentage of funding so if you take 76 8 and you demo, and you take that and you make it into a percentage and then you overlap that with our census it seems pretty pretty uh, overlay with the census it overlays that we about can do better than this what we're in, yeah, we always can do better. Well, yeah, but yeah. what we're showing is that we're we are meeting. Do we have 13 percent of a certain minority, and we're giving 13 percent of funding there? It shows that we're at least making sure we're fairly distributing the funds. Okay, I'm gonna have to check those numbers. I don't think I. Yeah, I would. I would turn those know, into. I have to, yeah, if you turn them into a percentage and then overlap that with census, it tracks pretty well with the census data, and they and they look for that. That's one of the the accountability measures. That's yeah. why we have to include it in there. And so what's our playbook to reach out and, and get more, more uh, inclusion? So we specifically reach out to those who are looking, the, uh, the real estate agents or the mortgage brokers who are looking to finance people. Mm -hmm. It's really getting the word out. So if people don't know there's resources there available to them, uh, then they're less likely to ask to utilize those resources. So we do a host of, we did the uh, event in the, uh, uh, the cleanup with the Habitat for Humanity. We brought a, a set up an informational booth. Hand a lot of uh, hand out a lot of information to the community so they know about it. Um, we work with the schools, make sure that they get information on these programs to take home to the parents. So it's constant just outreach to the neighborhoods. Okay, so with this outreach to the neighborhoods, so is it intentional when you try to include all ethnicities? Correct. In correct. And and HUD is very specific on benchmarking that. That's why we have to submit the data on page ten. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mika. Anything else? Other questions, comments? We'll take the vote. Council Member Ashford? Yes. <clears throat> Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Move on to item three. Approving the proposal with FK Engineering Associates for engineering services for a geotechnical investigation of the Black River Canal. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Support. Councilmember Beeden. Madam Mayor, if I could, Jim, do you have the photos to throw up? We have some photos of the, the mouth of the canal as well near the Tainer Gate. The high water levels, as you know, they're historically high. We haven't seen sustained <laughs> high water levels like this since the 80s, actually before I was born. Not only do we have erosion along the shoreline and along the banks, it's critically on, on the south side of the canal, the banks are eroding significantly, and it's going to pose an issue to not only our property, but adjoining properties, as well as the erosion is now coming around the Tainter Gate. 
And our fear is that with high waters and high ice levels, you could have significant damage to the Tainer Gate and the surrounding areas. We don't know anything about erosion. I'm going to be honest with you. We need, we need experts to come in to study what can be done, what can we do to shore up the erosion problems. Because to be quite frank, I don't think this high water is going away anytime soon. Uh, so there's some photos of the erosion. Uh, is there a couple more photos there, Jim, or just that one? Uh, that's the bank along the, along the canal. So a little black spot up in there is yeah. where you see road. And so you see significant damage there. And that can only go on so for so long before the, the, the Tainer Gate becomes compromised or the, the, the property around it becomes compromised. So we'd like to bring in an expert that knows about erosion. Uh, uh, Director Witter was able to find a firm that can provide that expertise to us to see what options we can to shore up and protect that. Because as you know, that Tainer Gate's critical to closing and sealing off that to prevent any uh, sand coming in and down the canal, filling it in during the winter months. I will say, based on what the south end of the county is getting, we got it on the high water damage. It's been limited here, but the south end of the county has had a lot worse problems. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Mayor Rapp. Councilmember Ward. This uh, evaluation they're going to do is really you know, is it going to be from the start of the, the canal to, to the Black River um, and where it meets there? Or is it just going to be around the gate? It's going to be around the, the gate and the mouth of the canal. In the mouth? And okay. the where it focuses. That's where the erosion is really happening. Oh, yeah. It's needed. The, if you get back, so from the Gratchet Bridge to the Black River, there's actually erosion control uh, matting on the banks. So we really don't have erosion control there. But they went to the, Fort Gratch or, sorry, to the Gratchet Bridge. And from Gratchet Bridge out, there is no erosion control measures put in. So the canal itself is in good shape, but from the bridge to the, to the, to the lake, there's been no matting, there's been nothing done. And so that was kind of a missing piece. Thank you. But we want to bring experts in to make sure. I don't want to, what we didn't want to do is we come in and say, let's put riprap in, let's do this, and this, and this. And it, we're really just guessing because we're not experts. So by bringing the experts, we can know that we're not going to spend you know, good money after bad. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions, discussion? <coughs> we will take the vote. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item four, please. Establishing authorized signatories for MERS contracts and service credit purchase approvals. Is there a motion? So moved. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there a second? Support. Council Member Pemberton. Is there a discussion? Uh, Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member Just Warden. Just wanted a little, little more, um, I guess, behind the scenes of these. What are we, is this something that's going to be in reaction to some type of uh, um, offers uh, with the change of the potential uh, uh, pension plans or benefits that they're uh, this service I'm just looking here for service credit purchase approvals and so forth um, I guess it kind of just wanted to know a little bit why the specific wording and why we're authorizing this stuff what's 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 the anticipation or what's ha what's going to be happening here so I can understand it N nothing this is just a this is a standard doc document that we we, we adopt and put on file at MERS so that the HR director needs to execute a retirement document or I'm not, or I, I'm not here to sign for it, Ed can do it. Uh, whether it be people retiring, people, a benefit, beneficiary having an issue that needs a signatory, this just allows us to sign with MERS. This is not part of any other plan or action or pending action at all. Okay. I appreciate that clarity. Thank you. Any other questions? We will take the vote. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? I was doing that. Okay. I, I apologize. Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll now move to item six. Oh, we're going to take them together. I was telling him I don't have any, not unless the council have any objections, I have a sole purpose for this. Oh, for three. asking for six those to be? Seven. Yeah, six and seven and also eight and nine together, those two. You have a reason, well, because you pulled them off the consent agenda. Is yes. that what you're getting at? Mm -hmm. We can do six and seven together then. Okay. 
Adopting the Michigan Local Agency Pavement Warranty Program and then implementing the Michigan Local Agency Pavement Warranty Program and annually reporting in accordance with the law. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Support. Councilmember Pemberton. Okay, I assume you have a question then, Councilmember Ashford? Yeah, I don't necessarily have a question, but um, I have a, a request that any time that, uh, you know, it's a, if it's not really administrative overall, um, that the, the uh, public should know this pavement because I know they, they read into it that it's something that is to our benefit. Yep. And I think the people should hear it. So I just wanted an overview. Yeah, just a brief overview. Yep, absolutely. Is. So back during the road funding plan, it was one of the last things Governor Snyder did was essentially implementing, it's amazing, you can build like a $4 million road and they walk away and you have no warranty. Right. And so what the legislature required is that all local municipalities develop a warranty process for roads mm -hmm. so that there's a, that make sure the taxpayers know that if their road goes to crap in mm -hmm. you know, five to ten years that there's measures that can be taken to protect the taxpayer funding. So you have the initial document, which establishes the program, and then you also have the, the program and how it reports with the law. So it is a uh, part of the road funding plan that we should hold contractors accountable to build good roads right. and so, build them to spec. Yeah, so it's some uh, kind of ins insurance for the people to know that, yes. that we're not just taking it for granted because the roads are certainly a top item here in the state of Michigan. Absolutely. And so that's why I wanted to... Uh, and any time we ever execute a warranty issue, I will be sure the council is notified. Okay. No problem. It's just about the people. <laughs> Thanks. Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member Warden. I was going to pull this off the uh, consent agenda as well. Um, the, I guess a little more details when you come to uh, having an agreement of what is over two million or, or plus and some type of a road work, um, what is the warranty Time frame, or what are what are you now changing compared to what might have been done with some other contractors uh, for other work prior? I'll have Witter come up and speak to this. Uh, Mayor and City Council, as part of our contracts, we have performance uh, bonds, that sort of thing, that um, make sure that the contractor performs in the best interest of the city. With this legislation that passed, obviously there's a lot of uh, material in here, but there's a lot of things depending on what kind of project you have, if you can offer a warranty or not. Um, there's some schedules in the back that show for the various um, types of projects what those periods are. So it's really project specific. So this is going to be put on to the contractors uh, when they're soliciting the bid? Well, it's one of these, we're obligated to adopt it, the city council is, based on the legislation. Um, and it's really up to the municipality to decide if they want to enforce it or not. In this document, there's concern on certain projects um, that whatever the requirement is for warranty or increase the cost of the project. Mm -hmm. So it gives the municipality the option, do we want to go for the warranty and pay more? Or because of the type of project, it doesn't really warrant spending that extra money. So. It's really up to the municipality to decide if they want to enforce or not. On the chance, you know, of us, it'd be nice if we got that kind of money, but you are obligated if you have the 1.8 to 2. Million, or 2.0 million. But if there's um, a lot of our projects, too, that are federal, federally funded are through MDOT, so MDOT administers those contracts, so that, that'll be in place for us. Okay. And I just, uh, for me, you know, just reading through the, you know, Michigan uh, Municipal League, letter was October 25th, 2018, just kind of regarding this new um, uh, program and, and components and, you know, it has to be adopted by uh, any community that, you know, community wants to participate by September 18th of 2019. So we're getting it today. I, you know, I probably would have, um, if we had a little more knowledge of this in advance, having that far in advance of this information, you know, I'd appreciate in the future having a little earlier than just, uh, you know, from last Thursday till now, just so I can read through the, I think it's 37 pages of stuff in that, in the document, so This Thank is you. something the MML has been speaking and sending information to us on for about two years. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. This 37 pages right here of what this yeah, program is going to be? Yeah, we've been, we've been, the, the MML has been sending information directly to the council members on this in the form of their publications for a year and a half, two years, I think. Yeah. 
this document right here for us, the 30-some pages? Yeah, we just got the server and the MMDL. The, the document itself, I mean, I'm just, you know, as it comes before us, this program here is, we're, we count on you guys to evaluate what you may or may not do, bring it to us and say, hey, this is something and for our approval. So that's it. I, I again, is, it, well, it, we get all kinds it's of stuff. guided by MMO. state statute. There's been other documents here that are much larger that you got last Thursday as well. And so it's been guided by state statute that follows the law. You've been briefed by MML in numerous publications that I know the council's gotten for the last year and a half, two years. So I, I take issue with that. We haven't sent it out early enough. And I haven't received a question on this or any concern from any council member since Thursday. Well, you got it for me now, once I had a chance to review it over the weekend. So. And, you know, and I'm not going to be refrained from asking questions or making a suggestion. It doesn't mean that you did something wrong here either. It's just for future or something no, like that. No, that's fine. I just, so, well, period. Uh, yes, go ahead, here. council oh, member. Do you have something? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, as an MML election, we, re re we review all the legislation and all these types of things, and we have been getting the pieces in. So I'm not going on any side or anything. And then we come up with a master document that, that is put out there for all the municipalities to uh, adopt. So it's not in the sole hands of you per se. Yeah, I just want to try to put that in perspective. Thank you. We will uh, take the vote on items six and seven. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll take <laughs> items eight and nine together, please. Adopting the amended St. Clair County Comprehensive Emergency Management Program to provide for the handling of emergency activities by the county and adopting the emergency support plan for the City of Port Huron in support to the St. Clair County Comprehensive Emergency Management Program. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Council Member, well, no, I'll get this one right. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, <laughs> supported by Council up. Member Eden. Yeah. Correct? Correct. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh, Mayor, I ask this to be, these two um, resolutions to be removed uh, for the simple reason anytime we're talking about emergency management, um, you know, that concerns our public, and I think that we should have some information. A briefing on that. What does this entail? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chief Nicholson will speak to this. I knew you were somewhere around here. Mayor and Council, uh, the Comprehensive Emergency Management Program was developed by Sinclair County Department of Homeland Security Emergency Management. Uh, it's a master plan for emergency response here in Sinclair County. Uh, it also serves as the framework link between local, state, and federal operations in the event of an emergency. Uh, it covers all hazards, uh, natural and man-made, and uh, it was first approved in, in 2009 by a previous council, and this is simply uh, some housekeeping and uh, the latest update. Okay. Do you have any specifics on the housekeeping, or is well, you weren't prepared for that? Uh, it's okay. Contact, contact information, uh, leads have changed in the, at local and state levels, uh, things of that nature. Okay. Is there anything that our public could be doing? Is there anything in there? There's Some of the things you're, you'll see are notification procedures uh, as far as using the WINS network as opposed to more traditional means in the past, uh, things of that nature. Oh, okay. Thank you. Madam Mayor and Council, yes. I will say this is very timely, the fact that we had the DTE fire, which was a, mm -hmm. an emergency in the county that we sent a lot of firefighters down for that as the command and control structure as well. We also had a billion-dollar train derailment happen within our city. Mm -hmm. Chief Nicholson lived in a tunnel for a few weeks. Or, Two weeks, I think. A week, eight days in a eight tunnel. Days. Eight days in a tunnel, and uh, they brought bring in resources from all over the area. So the, the, the plan works. Um, our staff is briefed on it. And they do an excellent job. Okay. And the public was included. I see in all of that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Mayor. Yes, Council just, Member. Just one further yes. comment. As I sit in some of these the emergency management meetings at the airport, uh, representing labor in St. Clair County, I just wanted to say that uh, with Chief Nicholson here and stuff, it's probably the most diverse working group that, that I've seen that, in, in how they work, mm -hmm. uh, where we have representatives from Michigan State Police, uh, oh. federal agencies, the county. It's, it's, it's really a cross-reference of St. Clair County. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, there's nothing we can do wrong to enhance what we're doing with this mm -hmm. emergency, emergency manager program. So I commend you and all the other volunteers and, 
and it's 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 a good cooperation. Our police chief is an attendee at, at many of the meetings, so it's it's very diverse and very good. So thank you. Very good. So it's a model for preparedness. So you're actually prepared if we have any, like we already had some, or any future one. This makes it better. It'll never happen yeah. until it does. Right. That's, that's, that seems thank to be the way. You. Okay. True. Thanks. Thank you very much. We will take the vote. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Okay, we'll move on then to ordinances. Number one. Second reading and enactment, an ordinance to amend Chapter 12 businesses of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances by adding Article 13 marijuana establishments for the purpose of prohibiting marijuana establish establishments in the city of Port Huron. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Pemberton, is there a second? Support. Go ahead, yeah. Councilmember Ashford. Trying to get going. <laughs> if you perhaps could address some of the things that were mentioned yep, earlier. Yep, absolutely. Marijuana it. is legal to smoke in the city of Port Huron. Recreational marijuana is legal in the city of Port Huron. You will not be arrested for having marijuana in your possession to the statutory limits. So uh, we are not banning marijuana. You can go outside off the balcony and have one tonight. Uh, however, there's too many unknowns right now with the recreational industry. Uh, it's not even clear if we can opt into some and opt out. That's being challenged in the courts. There's several court cases going right. Excuse me, we don't go back and forth. Thank you. This is not a permit forever opt out. This is just giving us a few months, about 10 months, to see how the courts begin to roll this out, to see what Lair does, what this industry looks like. Um, this is going to be a long term decision. Uh, and so this is not a permanent ban. It sunsets in July 1st. Uh, but it gives us the time necessary to develop the ordinances in place. And I will say, uh, this was not an issue until we had the emergency order that rolled it out at a much quicker rate. So we had a timeline to draft ordinances and to, and to roll this industry out. And then the state expedited that process significantly. And that's what has caused us to give us a moment of pause, because we need a few months to get the ordinance drafted. After the emergency rules were adopted and released, there's no way we could draft ordinances and get them on the books in time before the licenses started going out. So again, marijuana, recreational marijuana is legal in the city of Port Huron. Uh, we're just looking at the industry and zoning. And to, and to be frank, we take 10 months to a year on any major zoning issue, whether that be recovery homes, whether that be commercial rezoning, anything. So this is not an uncommon timeline to look at an issue. And so we will have this uh, numerous public hearings and more understanding of this issue before July 1st. And actually, it could come up even earlier than that. C correct. Just because it says the out date. Correct. Yes. Just because it says it sunsets on July first, doesn't mean that the mayor and council can't take action before then, uh, when we keep continue to work on this issue. And it's something we actively work on. I guess the other item too, talking about the monies that we would receive, there is no. I understand it. There's no guarantee the state of Michigan is going to give us. Correct, and the proportional breakdown at a local level, significant amount would go to the county, to the prosecutor, to the sheriff's office. At a local le level, 28 million may sound like a lot on a statewide level, but there's 1,700 municipalities in the state of Michigan that would all have to break that down. So it, it would not be a significant portion of revenue uh, that, that's been put out there. Okay. Is there any other questions from council or discussion? Mayor Rapp. Yes, Mayor um, Potem. I appreciate that clarification because I too was questioning some of the things that were brought up. Um, again, I'm not I'm not opposed. Um, it, it took a long time and, and several meetings to to come to the conclusion to support a temporary ban. Um, but I, I, again, I said it last time and I stick with that. I think we need to make sure we do it right. Uh, I would personally encourage administration and uh, our local council to. Preferably bring this back to council way sooner than that. I'd like to, us to address this and have it done uh, so that we could lift the ban and move forward, um, at least with those parts that we choose to opt into. So I will support the temporary ban, um, but if this was a permanent one, I would not support it. Is there any other discussion? Rip. Yes, council member. Yeah, just, just probably about a half hour before I left the house tonight, I looked at Semcock's uh, kind of their, their snapshot, and they had the their results of their survey on marijuana. And you know, contrary to everything what we hear, 
there's no overwhelming support for or against. It's really, I, 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 their, their thing took in the public, the government and everything, and it's a very diverse mm -hmm. representation of what, what marijuana can do, can't do, what have you, and the, and the people's feelings. And I don't know how many of these people can see it. You look at Semcock's website, but it's, it's a phenomenal piece of, of uh, information that I think everybody should share because it just tells the, where the pros are and the cons are and how the public feels and, and how city governments feel and how the state government feels. It's, it's just a, it's a phenomenal uh, piece of document. And well, I, anybody can get on that site. It's www.semcog, spelled out S-E-M-C-O-G dot org. They did, it. they did a completely very thorough job. So it's, it's something that, that I'll be looking at before I make my decision too, so thank you. Madam Mayor, if I could, one last thing. Um, if you are interested in helping shape the industry here in Port Huron as we develop these rules, please contact my office. I'd love to sit down. I have talked with you. Um, I'd love to sit down and, and meet with you and get your ideas. Tell me what you, what, what, how you think it would look, how it would work, what, what zoning should look like. We'd love to hear from you. David Haynes, our planning director, who handles a lot of our zoning issues. We want to hear from you. I'm not an industry expert in this, so as we go through this process, your voice is critically important. So please, don't, don't be shy. Please reach out to our office. Get on our calendar. We'll meet with you. We'll hear your concerns out, your ideas out, what you want to do. We'll be more than happy to make that happen. Any other questions or comments from council? Uh, Mayor Rep. Number one. Just, um, again, from my previous comments before, I, I firmly think as we're sitting up here and we're doing our own research and I'm doing an awful lot of uh, uh, trying to find out uh, information, not only from other cities, but trying to put it together as, you know, what it may look like. I'd like to see, <clears throat> when you mentioned about zoning and some things I've asked before, and I, I, I do want to have council be, if we can, we, I would like to have some of that information as well. Um, I'd like to have an updated, uh, you know, zoning map. The best we can, we can take a look at different areas, um, how things are rated, and um, kind of compare if there's sample ordinances as well. You mentioned, I know it's been out there. I'd like to see, um, I guess have it provided to us what you guys are looking at um, as we go and look at for ourselves for some of these other cities, um, doing our own, you know, and, uh, I guess research and and um, thought process. I'd like to, see if something's coming up that you guys is administration are, are thinking about uh, send over a couple drafts or what you're provide it with us too so we can kind of be on the same page um, that's what I'd ask but uh, I think this is um, you know um, this is something that we need to be on the forefront we need to put a lot uh, a lot of effort and time in I'm not really uh, um, uh, in support of this uh, the time frame of how long this is going to be versus what we're gonna have to put together in that short time frame um, and to have it as a as a ban in the way it's worded, I'm just not uh, I'm just not there yet. So I'm not going to be supporting this today. Did you have something? I would say the planning commission will have a huge role in this as well. I didn't hear. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Anything else from council? We'll take the vote. Council member Archibald. Yes. Council member Ashford. Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? No. Mayor Rep? Yes. We don't have applause during our business meeting for votes of the City Council, please. That does conclude our regular agenda, and we do have uh, one announcement here. The annual 911 Remembrance Ceremony will be held this Wednesday, September 11th at 9 a.m. at the International Flag Plaza. Please, if you have the time, join. It's a very moving ceremony. Is there anything else to come before council before we adjourn? Madam Mayor, I would just note, if you see the eye in the sky there, there's a camera there, there's a camera there, and I believe there is a, well, there's a camera back here. We have switched to HD uh, video, so now we don't look like little foggy people on the screen. So we have HD video. In addition to HV video, this video is now live streamed on YouTube. So if you don't have Comcast or you don't have cable, a lot of people are getting rid of, get ditching the box and getting rid of cable, you can go on to YouTube and watch our council meetings live in HD. 
if that's how you want to spend your night. So we are just trying to be more transparency. We want to go where the voters go. If they're going to online platforms, we would like to be there as well. So you can stream it and share it on social media. So that's the cameras up there. And they'll be mounted in the long run. Jim's put a lot of work in this. He's back there uh, running this right now. Um, so that's something we just wanted to do and make available to the public. Thank you. Mayor Rep? Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem. I'd like to take a quick moment to put on my daytime hat and uh, remind everybody that next week is a uh, community rough set for kids. Uh, so starting with Friday night, uh, the 13th, we will be in conjunction with McMorrin having a concert. Langhorn Slim will be there and they are donating $5 of every ticket price to community rough set for kids. And then on Sunday, we have Sunday Fun Day. Uh, it's a day for us to give back to the community, something fun for the children, an opportunity for them to interact with us when it's not uh, with them coming in and being interviewed because they've been abused. It's just something fun. Everybody's invited. It is 100% free aside from they do ask for a donation for the hot dog and french fried lunch. Uh, that is from 12.30 to 2.30 at the Michigan Mutual building behind in their parking lot. At 2.30, we will watch Matt Markham from Q Country 107. He will ascend up onto the rooftop where he will live for a week and we will spend a week fundraising uh, to help us keep our, our doors open. Uh, we operate off about 65% of our funding is locally fundraised. And this is more than a third of that that we raise in this one week. So we appreciate your support, but really wanna see a lot of people come out for Sunday fun day, the, the free part of this. Thank you. Thank you, anything else? Yeah, Rep, oh, uh, yes. I'd just like to announce also in the, in the spirit of fundraising, our sons, um, they are also having an event on Sunday the 15th from 1 to 5 at the Grant School property. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's a capital campaign, so free food and everything. So they're asking people to come and give them their support. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Mayor Rep. Council Member Ward. First year in the September. I just want to, you know, again, um, uh, the uh, the Thursdays uh, Rock in the Rivers, are, you know, August is done. We had a great summer. I, I want to just uh, say again to all of our city staff and all the different organizations even throughout the whole summer, um, it's just amazing how much activity and how much availability and enjoyment from all different, uh, anybody's different interest. Uh, outstanding job. And now kids are back to school. Um, want to make sure that everybody is, uh, you know, taking a little extra time as they're driving thinking they might be a little late to work or driving through neighborhoods and, and that type of thing. You know, just slow it down a little bit, just to be careful, just to be sure. And um, again, um, looking forward to this fall season now with, uh, with everything changing. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing else. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. See you later. <laughs>